We would like to bring a sister who's going to introduce Minister Farrakhan, a sister that Chicago is getting to know very well. Let me bring her up to you, our dear, beloved Sister Minister, Sister Minister Ava Muhammad. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I greet my beloved brothers and sisters of the mighty black nation in the words of peace and paradise in the language of our fathers of Isalaam Alaikum. Brothers and sisters, Allah has blessed us once again to come together here in the Final Call Administration mm -hmm. building to hear the words of wisdom through our leader and his servant, Minister Farrakhan Muhammad. We want to welcome again all of the brothers and sisters in our listening audience in Chicago who support the work and effort of Minister Farrakhan Muhammad to rebuild the works of his father, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Brothers and sisters, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told us that the greatest enemy we have is fear. Yes. Fear of the slave master and the slave master's children and that which will bring them displeasure. Yes. He said that the only way we can remove this fear is through total submission to the Lord of the worlds, the almighty God, nourisher unto perfection, Allah who is not many gods, but who is one God. We are taught in the Bible and in the Holy Quran how to look for and how to identify in this last day and hour who is with God and who is yeah. with the devil. There's only two minds prevailing on the planet Earth, the mind of Allah and the mind of the devil. And they are both struggling for your mind. And we already know for it is written who will prevail. It is he that created himself and the heavens and the earth. The same God that your mother and father prayed to to deliver us from 430 years of suffering. A God who is not to come but is with us today. We're taught that you recognize God by his ambition. His ambition is freedom, justice, and equality. We recognize the devil by his ambition. His ambition is destruction, and he uses delusion. He makes us play with our own mind, black man and woman. He makes us believe that he stands for right, and that right is incorrect. So it is only through prayer and submission to the almighty God that created you, me, and the planet that we live on to ask us that we maintain our sanity and the balance. That we get off of this weak need, vacillating policy that the black nation has of passiveness. That we stand up for what is right today and that we back the man who is in our midst today. It is time for us to answer God's call. His call is that we simply stand for what is right and he will do the rest. And so today we're blessed to have in our midst a brother who's humble, who is submissive, but through his submission and humility, we are seeing projected the strength of almighty God himself. He will not be stopped. We will not be stopped. Let us welcome our brother, our leader, and our last chance for repentance and restoration to God, Minister Louis Farrakhan Muhammad. Assalamualaikum.
Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I greet you, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Once again, it is my great honor, privilege, and pleasure to have this opportunity to represent the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the teachings of Islam, the teachings of all of the prophets, the teachings of the Holy Quran. I am so uh, thankful to Almighty God Allah that no matter what controversy is swirling around us generally and me particularly, I am not phased in the least. I am so confident of victory. Though it may appear to many of you that uh, Louis Farrakhan is insignificant and weak, in comparison to the mighty enemies that are arrayed against me, I can assure you all that I am the victor even before the battle starts. <laughs> and I can assure you all that to defeat me and what I represent is to defeat the Lord of creation, and this the enemies of Farrakhan cannot do. So I come to you this morning very humbly, very much at peace, very full of joy, knowing that nothing that the enemy says or does will weaken the truth one bit, nor will it weaken the righteous. No. We expected this. And so when we get what we expect and what is written, we can only say praise be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. His word is true. You know, uh, to my beloved Muslim brothers and sisters, followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, followers of Prophet Muhammad, followers of Islam, you can tell when a man is following in the footsteps of his father. For those of you who may have doubted me, when you see the same enemies that were the enemies of my father become the enemies of his child, then you know that the child is following in the footsteps of his father. That, that, that should be very clear to those of you who know anything of my father, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, then you know that I am indeed his child. And as they were not successful in the least in disturbing the nation of Islam under my father, they shall no more be successful in disturbing the nation of Islam under his son. <laughs> now to some of you this may sound like arrogant boastfulness. No, no, no. It is not permitted of any person who believes in God to boast arrogantly. But Paul boasted, but he did not boast in himself. He boasted in his Lord. He boasted in the Christ. He boasted in Almighty God. It is that power that I boast in today. Nothing of myself, for there is nothing of myself that is of value. It is only what is in myself of him that is of value. So I say to all of you, you know, let not your hearts be troubled by the things that you see and hear in the news or what they plan to do with Louis Farrakhan. Uh, these are but uh, stepping stones to the glorification of God. But yes. how else can God be glorified? Yes. Unless he makes a servant. And that servant stands up boldly in his name, yes, challenging the forces of destruction that have destroyed the lives of our people and the lives of the people of the earth. How then can God glori be glorified if his servant is afraid to be crucified? Yes. 
See, Jesus, when he was in the garden, asked his father to pass the cup away from him. And it is natural when one faces the tremendous odds that we face to begin to wonder, can we make it and must we drink of such bitter cup? The cup of rejection. The cup of seeing your friends whom you have helped and benefited turn against you because they misunderstand. The cup of false accusation being brought before the counsels of men to be scourged and evil spoken of, to be tried and ultimately to be put to death. So Jesus had that passion that he had to go through. And uh, most Christians who claim to love Jesus are not willing, of course, to go through that kind of passion for his name's sake. So you must question your love of Christ. If your love of Christ is not tested in a world that lifts up his name but refuses to walk in his way, then you see, you cannot really say whether you really believe in Christ or not. But I say to all Christians who are within the sound of this radio broadcast, I am not only a believer in Christ, but I have submitted myself to be Christ-like. And as a result of that, I am persecuted even as he was and even as his disciples were. But as he was in that garden of Gethsemane in a time when prayer was absolutely and profoundly necessary, I understand that we're having some technical difficulty. You will always have te technical difficulty from now on. <laughs> Because Farrakhan is not going to fade away. You know, I am determined, you know, you will not back me down. You will not cow me down. You will have to kill me to stop me from saying the truth. And you can't kill me. You cannot do that. I want... I want Reverend Jackson, I want Mr. Johnson, I want black business people, I want black politicians to understand what it means to say, the Lord is my shepherd. I want these preachers who cow down in fear to stand up, these politicians that fear to stand up, I want you to know what it means when the scripture says, yea, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. I want you to know what that means. asked me on television this week about whether a climate for my assassination had been produced. I said, certainly it has. But I don't care anything about the climate. I know who has power over the climate. I'm not worried about anybody assassinating me. You don't have a gun big enough. To shoot me. I don't need guards around my house. I thank you for being there. <laughs> but I'm not in need of that. What I'm in need of, I already have. And that's the backing and the power of Almighty God and the angels themselves. So I'm saying to black America, fear not. Let not your hearts be troubled. I might look like a madman to some of you, but I am anxious for God to prove that he is God. And he has raised me up among you as a dare to white people to show you that they don't have any power against a servant of Almighty God. So 
when Jesus was in that garden, under that heavy passion, wanting the bitter cup to be passed away from him, I understand his feeling because it's painful to work all your knowing life for a people only in the time of trial to see them turn against you. It is painful to work all your knowing life for the liberation of people and to be a true lover of your people and to have your love misunderstood and to have your own people call you opportunistic or to have your own people think that I would ride on the shoulders of my brother to get where I want to go in life. I have never been that kind of man. How little you know of me. But Almighty God, through the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, is my master, my teacher, my shaper, and my developer. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad told all of you to look at me. And he told all of you to listen to me. Because he was going to do a work through me that even though you were looking at it, you wouldn't even believe what you were seeing. I have taken on the rulers of the world. And they shall not overcome what I have to say. When the government gets tired of listening to me, then bring me before your scholars. I'm ready for them and for you. When you get tired of hearing what I have to say, then call me before the best that you can produce. You cannot defeat me in what I teach. Ain't not a man on the earth that can handle what I teach from Almighty God, Allah, and His servant. We are the overcomers. We are the righteous. We are the powerful. We shall be the victors. You used to sing, we shall overcome. You are watching a man that is overcoming and you still don't believe it. In the Holy Quran, in the 61st surah or chapter, in the 8th verse and the 9th verse it reads, They desire to put out the light of Allah with their mouths, but Allah will perfect His light, though the disbelievers may be averse. He it is who sent His messenger with the guidance and the true religion, that he may make it overcome the religions, all of them, though the polytheists may be averse. In the Washington Times this week, for the whole week, they have featured articles with Louis Farrakhan on the front page. And they've put out a magazine based on those articles called Insight Magazine, where they call themselves doing an expose on Louis Farrakhan. They mock Master Farad Muhammad. And uh, they would have the people believe that he's a white man and a dope peddler and a cheap criminal that they arrested. But the Quran says in the 61st surah, who is more unjust than he who forges a lie against Allah and he is invited to Islam. And Allah guides not the unjust people. Beloved brothers and sisters, in 1962 or 3, 
The Hearst newspapers came out with what they called an expose and used that same picture of this same white man saying that a white man began the nation of Islam. W.D. Ford. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad came out the very next week with a picture of this imposter and a picture of Master Farad Muhammad on the front page of the Muhammad Speaks newspaper and offered the Hearst newspapers a hundred thousand dollars sent a brother there with a cashier's check and said if you can prove that your W.D. Ford is our Master W.D. Farad then you can have the hundred thousand dollars and we will pay with our lives of course you know the lie was exposed then and the lie will be exposed today but what is their motive why now it didn't work in 63 you bring it back and try it again in 85 what is your motive For the first time in a long time, there's a black man in America that has mass appeal. This is the way Allah and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad wanted it. Today, Louis Farrakhan is growing in strength and in the hearts of the masses of black people. White people are terrified because they have never wanted a black man to have the love and respect of black people unless he was their man. Someone that answered to them. One that they called a responsible Negro leader. Responsible to them. They know that they don't control me. They know that they cannot control me. And they know that they cannot buy me. I am untouchable by this world. They know that. So they call me Cannon Mouth. Farrah Cannon they call me. Because the blast of truth out of my mouth is tearing their world apart. And you sit there and you hear them say these things and you see in the paper them write these uh, uh, cartoons of me and you don't even compare it to the scripture. The scripture tells you that a man would come up among you. <laughs> I quote the exact words. It said that day cannot come except there be a falling away first and the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition whom the Lord will consume with the spirit of his mouth on the brightness of his coming listen I am not the Lord but I am the clearest sign that that one has appeared and is in the world. They are afraid of what is coming out of my mouth because what is coming out of my mouth is tearing up their world, making manifest their lies and their deceit, their trickery, and exposing the man of sin, the son of perdition. You see, the book of Revelations talks about those who would say they are Jews but are not, but that he would make them of the synagogue of Satan. Remember, dear beloved Christians, and don't any of you preachers think that you can come to me and dissuade me from my mission. You can only come to me and bear witness to my mission. Paul said a Jew is not a Jew outwardly. 
But a Jew is a Jew inwardly. Jew is not a race. Jew is a spiritual state of being. When one is not circumcised of the foreskin of the male organ, but when one has experienced the circumcision of the heart, then that one is become the Jew of the scripture. And the Jew of the scripture is not a Semite or an Arab or a black or a white. The Jew of the scripture is a spiritual state of being. Listen carefully. That's the book. I'm not making this up. But a man of sin, not a spook nor a spirit, but a human being who is a knowing and rebellious one. One that has heard the preaching of the prophets and understood it and then altered the words of God out of their places. And by altering the words of God, they colored and changed that which was original. And when you change that which is original, that which is pure and holy and undiluted, and you dilute it and corrupt it and adulterate it, then you feed an adulterated word of God into the minds of the people and make them think it is directly from God. Then you make a colored mind. You make a blue or blurry eye. You deceive the masses and make them self-deluded. You make a devil. A skunk of the planet. And this is why the earth today is under the stench of wickedness. Because those that say they are Jews and are not but are of the synagogue of Satan have deceived the whole world. But today, one of the children of the slaves has been risen up by the power of Almighty God Allah and he's not shaken, nor is he quickened. He's not running, nor is he hiding. But he openly challenges the world. Come and get me if you dare. <laughs> Wicked demons who have made devils, made yourself into a devil, made the Gentile nations into devils, where your deceit has now poisoned the very earth. So Jesus and Paul, pardon me, said, as by one man sin entered into the world. And death came into the world because the world sinned. Then death has spread to all men. So Paul again said, we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles under sin. Paul said, there's none that doeth righteousness. There's none that doeth good. No, not one. This is not Farrakhan talking. That's what Paul said. I'm only saying what you claim to believe. It's there in your book. None of you are righteous. Both Jews and Gentiles. Because you have been deceived in the word of God. You that preach the word of God are deceived in what you preach. <laughs> Made devils. Skunks of the planet earth. So a stench comes up from your religious practice. Your religious worship stinks. Because you praise God with your lips, but your hearts are far removed from the practice of righteousness. I'm talking about Christians, I'm talking about Jews, 
I'm talking about Muslims. I'm talking about Hebrews. I'm talking about Buddhists. I'm talking about Shintoists and Zoroastrianists. I'm talking about atheists and agnostics. I'm talking about Catholics and Baptists and Church of God in Christ. Your religion is off base. You have been deceived. It's difficult to admit it. But you are in hell from the wickedness of a rebel called a son of perdition. Hmm. That man of sin must be revealed. The cover must be pulled up off of him. As one of the old prophets said, Allah will lift up the skirts of his garments and show the world his shame. Well, if you see it happening, don't get angry with me. You don't like what I'm saying, then burn your Bibles. Go home today and pull the pages out and burn them up. Because what I say is justified by Scripture. You don't like what I say, Muslims, go home and burn your Holy Quran. I'm not anti Semitic. I'm anti-evil. And if you're a son of God and a son of righteousness and a daughter of God and a daughter of righteousness, you too must be anti-evil, anti-oppression, anti-exploitation, anti-racism, anti-sexism. Yes, you must be anti these things if you are for God. Hmm. They're doing these things because they fear the word. So they want to make the speaker of the word look like he's insane. (laughs) Well, do all you can. It will not work today. Allah says in the Quran, he will perfect his light. Though the disbelievers may be adverse. But to the Muslims and to all righteous thinking people, this is a time of testing. And do not be afraid of the time of testing. For the Holy Quran in the second chapter in the 155th verse says, We shall certainly try you with something of fear and hunger, and loss of property and lives and fruits, and give good news to the patient. We're not going to get away and see the kingdom of God without trial. The kingdom of God, according to the scripture, comes through much trial and much tribulation. So Muslims, if we're tried with something of fear and hunger, and loss of property, and loss of lives and fruits, then don't cry out when it happens, Lord, why me? For the Quran says in that same second chapter, the 214th verse, or do you think that you will enter the garden while there has not yet befallen you the like of what befell those who have passed away before you? Distress and affliction befell them and they were shaken violently so that the messenger and those who believed with him said, when will the help of Allah come? Now surely the help of Allah is nigh. So beloved, gird up your loins. This is not a time to get weak. This is a time to get strong. Don't look at Farrakhan and say, oh, he's leading us into death. You were in the valley of the shadow of death. And you will have to go through death in order to get to the other side. That's what the Jordan River is all about. And that's why your parents used to sing the song, I want to cross over Jordan. It didn't mean that river over there, but you want to cross over the Jordan River of slavery and suffering and death to get to the other side where all is peace and rest. 
We're on our way. The black man will not be stopped today. There's no power that the wicked have that will stop us. They've tried in their articles to link me to the El Rukans and gangs in Chicago. I said, please link me with my brothers. I'm not ashamed to be linked to my brothers, the El Rukans. I'm not ashamed to be linked to the disciples. That's my family. You say, but they're criminals. Who judges them? You mean the number one criminal on earth judges them? You say, but they sell dope. Here's a man that rewrote the word of God and doped up the world on false religion. And he's going to accuse my brothers of selling the dope that they bring in the country. Here's a man that's going to accuse my family of prostitution when he makes whores out of black leaders and black politicians and black organizations making them to lay down in bed getting no aid but AIDS. They have a hell of a nerve. You cannot judge the El Rooker. You are not clean enough to judge the El Rooker. A filthy society of demons. You leave my brothers alone. Because God didn't raise me through the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to be a condemner of black people. He raised me to be a defender of them. And since my father, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, was a reformer of black people. And since the very Jesus that you preach, you wicked hypocrites, used to sit down with the publicans and the sinners. And they said, but Jesus, if you're such a righteous man, why are you sitting with the sinners? And Jesus answered unto them saying, it is the sick that need a doctor. If you see the doctor sitting with the sick, you don't think anything wrong with that because it is the sick that need a doctor. If you see me sitting down with people who sell dope, who prostitute and commit crime, it is not that I am a criminal. I am in the world. But I'm not of the world. But I'm in the world to reform my people whom the world has destroyed. In the name of Almighty God and in the name of his servant, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So what else will you charge me with? In the article, they say that Master W.D. Farad was a white man. Well, if he is a white man, how then can you charge me with being a bigot <laughs> and a racist and being anti-white if my own savior is a white man and we honor him and respect him and set a day in commemoration of his birth into the world. How can you charge me with being a racist if my own savior is a white man? You see, when you lie, when you're a liar, you can't tell it right. The man that you brought to us as W.D. Ford is not our man. That's your maid devil. That's your man. The man that I represent, he had a Caucasian mother, all right. But he had an original black father. He was very light-skinned, but he was not white. That's again showing we're not racist. Why the very Quran out of which I preach came through a prophet. As some scholars say, was very light-skinned. Others say he was a white man. So I couldn't be a racist. If I can accept the book, 
that came through Prophet Muhammad. So what are you talking about? W.D. Fod was a dope seller. That's what they said. Yet he took us out of dope. I want you to think about that. Here's a man that took us out of drugs. If he took us out of drugs, how could he be a drug dealer? If he a, was arrested for selling drugs and he liked drugs, he would make his followers what he was. But you admit, white folks, that the only successful drug rehabilitation program has been the program of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So how could the man that taught him be a drug dealer and my father, Elijah Muhammad, takes us out of drugs and I take the people up out of drugs. You're trying to subtly insinuate that I get my money through the sale of drugs. But you are so stupid as a liar. You turn around and admit that the way the nation gets its money is through the sale of records and tapes and books and fish. Well, that's not drugs. See, a liar today can't lie too good. A liar today, he tells his lie, but as fast as his lie is told, the wise can see right on through it. Oh, you pitiful man of sin. You pitiful member of the synagogue of Satan. You pitiful demon. Your skirt is up. And your drawers are dirty. And the stench of you is now being exposed. In the book of in the book of Revelations, I want you to know where this is in the book, so you can go on home and study. In the, of course, it's all through the book, but this is a very special passage here. In the twelfth chapter of Revelations, it says, "And there appeared another wonder in heaven." And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to be delivered to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now, you know the Bible is not talking about a real, literal dragon. But it's talking about human beings that have the characteristics of a dragon. A dragon is a grown-up, highly developed serpent. They say he spits fire out of his mouth. It's really a mythological kind of creature. <laughs> this dragon is not green. It is red. The red here stands for its anger. And the dragon stood before a woman. But the dragon had seven heads and ten horns. And seven crowns upon his head. It's talking about something that was built on seven hills. Rome. It's talking about the government of the West that support 
an imperialistic form of Christianity. I'm not talking about the words of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about religious imperialism. And for those of you, my dearly beloved Catholic friends, who have have you... Jesus Christ. I'm talking about religious imperialism. And for those of you, my dearly beloved Catholic friends, who have as your as your father, his eminence, his holiness, the Pope. Rome was built on seven hills. But Rome is not righteous. She's far from righteous. And the church that comes out of Rome is far from righteous. The word dragon is used. In the word dragon, you get the word drag. When someone goes out in drag, what does that mean? It means a man that actually puts on clothes as a woman and is a homosexual. That's a bad word. Has a bad meaning has a bad denotation and connotation. To drag, when they used to take our fathers, when they wanted to make an example out of them, they would tie them behind a horse, alive, and drag our fathers over the earth while the stones cut their bodies. But the real meaning of drag on is one who comes after you have mounted up on the mount of truth and drags you down from your mount and drags you out of the light into darkness again. The drag on Red with anger, stood before the woman. The woman who was ready to be delivered. The woman here represents a messenger of God. Pregnant with the truth and with a nation that was about to be delivered. The nation was destined to rule, to replace the rule of the dragon. So the dragon wanted to kill the woman and to devour her baby as soon as the baby was born. It said that the woman brought forth a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. This is telling you that a new ruler is to come up. And the dragon doesn't want the new ruler to come in. So just as Herod wanted to kill Jesus before Jesus was born, the dragon wants to kill this male child before it is born. Just as the government wants to kill off the leadership of black people before it comes to birth because they fear the future. But the book says that there was war in heaven Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world. So the dragon and the devil and the serpent and Satan is one and the same. And as we move on in that chapter, it says 
Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down who accused them night and day before God and before the throne. And they overcame him, the dragon, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. This is not talking about some of you weak-kneed Christians who love your life and love the life of this world and will not stand up for truth, but it's talking about men and women who care nothing about their life when it comes to truth and righteousness and the salvation of the people. They will stand for God even to their death. They will stand. Look. They overcame the serpent by the blood of the lamb. It's not talking about lamb's blood. But as lamb's blood was used in the time of Moses on a gate pole so that the death angel would pass over the righteous. The blood of Jesus, meaning the life that the man lived, is the only life that will enable us to overcome this wicked serpent and dragon. If you will live the life that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us to live, if you will live the life that the Jesus lived, then that kind of life will give you power in it to overcome this serpent, this dragon. So when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman who brought forth the male child. As they watched, as I moved about this country, they saw a nation coming up, cheering their own black brother. They had never witnessed this before in the history of America. Thousands of black men standing up with their brother and for their brother. And they saw a male child coming into existence. And they're angry with the woman, meaning a man who is the like a woman unto another man. In that I am not the author of what I teach. But my mind, like the dark womb of a woman, was a willing receptacle for the word of God. And the word of God from the honorable Elijah Muhammad impregnated me with his spirit. And as I speak the word, people are delivered unto God and unto the truth and unto the Lamb of God, who is the honorable Elijah Muhammad. So now the dragon is persecuting the woman. They are getting me ready now, or getting ready to bring me before their courts. This article that appeared in Insight magazine has been delivered to all of the senators. The aim, of course, is that the Jews who have power will put pressure on the government to deal with Farrakhan. It came over the news the other morning that when the president goes to Geneva to talk with Gorbachev, the Jews there in Geneva have requested a meeting with him. And they want to discuss the rise of quote-unquote anti-Semitism in America, which means they want to discuss with him Farrakhan. What are you going to do about this little black man? Yeah. And so they persecuted the woman. Yeah. Those Muslims who work for Jews, the Jews will say to you, I cannot use you anymore. Those of you who have been fired because you came to a meeting, don't worry about that. Because they don't control the sun. Nor the moon, nor the star. Nor the rain that germinates the seed that grows the wheat that makes your daily bread. You don't pray to the Jews. Jews, give us this day our daily bread. You say, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. So 
they persecuted the woman. Yes. Allah says in the revelation, Rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. The end is come. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. You see, beloved, the white man is now saying to black people, Farrakhan is your problem. Because if it were not for Farrakhan, we wouldn't be hard on you like this. They're telling Mr. Johnson, if it was not for Farrakhan, Mr. Johnson, it wouldn't be a problem for you today. So, Mr. Johnson, it's Farrakhan that's your problem. Jesse, it's Farrakhan that's your problem. Black Caucus, it's Farrakhan that's your problem. Black leaders, it's Farrakhan that's your problem. And unless you agree to sanction his removal, we'll continue to persecute all of you because we're angry now that you didn't stand up against Farrakhan like you should. I say to all of you, stand up, Mr. Johnson. Stand up, Mr. Jackson. Stand up, Father Clements. Stand up, black leaders. Fear not. They have no power over you, but the power you give them by your weakness. Stand up, black leadership. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Stand up, black leaders. Those of you who would like a copy of today's tape, you call this number right now, 994-5775. I'm not quite finished. I'm almost there, but if you're in the neighborhood, keep on coming by. They say I got 15 more minutes because they blew the first 15 minutes of the broadcast with technical difficulties, so the truth is rolling on. Because they see the end. Their kingdom has been weighed in the balance and has been found wanting. They're angry. Let them be angry. For the Bible says, why do the heathen rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. They imagine that they can kill me. That's vanity. Allah will sit in heaven, the book says, and laugh at them. Yes. He will have them in derision. Yes. They're angry, brothers. Yes. They're angry, sisters. Because yes. they're in. Yes. Their end is coming. Yes. You should rejoice. Yes. Like a woman who is in the final month yes. of her labor. Yes. In the final minutes of her labor. Yes, she knows the pain is hard, but she knows that birth will bring relief. So I say to you that this dragon, drag on, this woman in drag, this freak, this thing, who wants to frighten us? Who wants to frighten <laughs> The book says the dragon, the serpent, cast out of his mouth. Uh -huh. Now the serpent has a male gender. Oh. She's not really a serpent. It's a man with serpent-like qualities. If you read what they write, they write like a snake. Oh, 
Oh, Paul had it right. Said a poison of asps is under their tongue. Their mouth is an open sepulcher, meaning their mouth is a tomb. And if you listen to their words, they lead you into spiritual death. <laughs> this demon spewed out of his mouth water like a flood. He didn't say it was a flood. It was like a flood. Now the propaganda, ever since the overwhelming event in Madison Square Garden, when they looked up and saw between 40 and 50,000 black people that could only get into a 25,000 seat auditorium, jammed up everywhere in the aisles, in the floor, in the corridors, in the forum next door, on the outside, crying tears because some of them couldn't get in. When they saw the fervor of the people for their brother, they said, this man has to be stopped. I understand. Because if I were they, I would want to stop him too. Because <laughs> the man represents their death. This is why they call me a verbal terrorist. Because they're terrorized by what I say. Because they know what I say means their end. Their end don't come from bullets. Their end comes from truth. Truth. True. So the serpent now has a male gender spewing out a flood like a water. Have you noticed that since the overwhelming event on October the 7th, there hasn't almost been one day that they have had something in the newspaper about Louis Farrakhan. Every day, anybody that will criticize me, anybody that will condemn me, anybody that will say anything evil against me, give them headlines. I want to say about my sister, Betty Shabazz. Nobody knows her trouble. But Allah and Sister Betty. Betty sincerely tried on that television show to stay away from any kind of controversial talk about Louis Farrakhan. But a Jew, a smart, crooked man of sin. Brought her on, supposedly, to talk about her late husband. The name of the program was Betty Shabazz. Talks on Malcolm X. But for the whole 20 minutes or so of the beginning of the program, they tried to keep leading the sister to talk about me. She danced. She pranced. She skated beautifully. But he, like a snake, he kept right after her. When she would weave, he weaved. Every time she made a move, he did. Come on up on the other side. He was a snake, charming her with soft speech, clever words. I watched him a snake, a devil. But I knew that if I had been in front of him, by the grace of God, I could have defanged that skull. But my sister lost her power to deal with him because she long ago lost her faith in God and his apostles. Finally, the snake touched the nerve 
her late husband Malcolm X. And when he touched that nerve, she reacted. And then he got from her what he was trying to get all along. He was trying to make her say that Firecom was a drug addict. And Malcolm had to lay with Firecon to get him out of drugs. <laughs> but if I were a drug addict, they would have found it out by now. And since they published whatever they got, surely they would have published that. Firecon is like you. Yes, sir. I came up in the world. Yes, sir. As a boy, 16 years of age, I was in show business. Yes, sir. And I was introduced to my first reefer at 16. Yes, sir. I admit that I smoked a few reefers in my life. You can count them on both hands. Yes, sir. Maybe none of you can say that. Yes, sir. <laughs> But I was a man that, from a young boy, understood. I was a performer. And in order to perform well, I had to be in control. I never liked performing high. I never will forget one night, a man came up on a ship from Jamaica. And he had what they call ganja. They told me ganja was bad stuff. So I certainly wanted to try it out. And so, in between shows, I tried out this little ganja. When I took a puff off that big bomber-like cigarette, looked like a cigar, I found myself rolling in the street. That stuff was so it was heavy for me now. I don't know about you all. But that thing knocked me down. I mean, to the ground, brother. I was going back to my show with my tie in my hand. Playing my tie like it was a saxophone. <laughs> By the time I got back to the club, yes, sir. it was time for the show to go on. Yes, Farcon hit the stage, and I was singing, You Go to My Head. I'll never forget it. <laughs> Like a sip of sparkling burgundy brew. <laughs> and I couldn't remember whether it was the first chorus, yes, the second chorus. Yes, I lost time. Uh -huh. I couldn't feel the meter. Uh -huh. I said, this is terrible. I know it was. <laughs> and I got through that show. Uh -huh. I didn't break the show up like I usually did. Yes, sir. Because when you don't have a grip on yourself, yes. you can't generally do the best that you can. Yes. So I learned at 16 that I did not need drugs. Yes. At 16. Yes. I took a little alcohol because my mother, bless her heart, uh -huh. she always had a little nip somewhere in the house. And not somewhere, in a certain place. And she would give me and my brother a little bit of wine, a little bit of whatever the drink was that was there so that I would not have to go out in the street. I never had any real yearning for this. I didn't like it. But hanging out with the boy. 
The boys wanted to get a bottle. I was only 13, young and upcoming athlete, violin player. And they thought that all violinists in those days were sissies. So I had to show everybody, you know, that I was just as regular as everybody else. So the boys wanted us to chip in and get a half a pint. Half a pint was a lot of stuff in those days for a 13 year old boy. I never will forget the name of the brand. Probably hasn't been on the market since. Lands down whiskey. And it will land you down, brother and sister. So me and my boys went to hiding in the alley, squeaking off of this lands down. And when I got home, because I had to be home early, I had one of those kind of mothers. If you didn't come in on time, she would lock the door. Put a chair up under the knob so you put the key in and can't get in. Then I'd have to sit out in the hall in the cold night. Then about two in the morning, she would come open the door and call me in, smack me up in the head a few times. Well, this night I came in trying to tip, you know, because she's such a smart mother, you can't fool her. So I got in quick. Went to the bathroom, washed out my mouth quick, and ran to the bed. <laughs> Was in the bed. Switched the light off and was in the bed before the room got dark. <laughs> this must be the light part of the teachings. But what I'm saying this for is to let you know, brothers and sisters, I'm you. I'm no strange dude. I didn't come here on no cloud. I came from my mother's womb just like you. I'm not a better man than you. I'm your brother. You see? I say all this to humanize myself so that you don't get spooked out about me. I'm very real, very much down to earth, you know. <clears throat> and uh, I say that to say I went to bed that night and the bed started turning. I never knew that alcohol could do you like that. I mean, but the bed started turning, brother. And that's an awful feeling when you lay down in your bed to sleep and the bed starts turning. Finally, the bed was turning, so I got up, sitting on the bed with my head between my knees trying to draw breath, keep from throwing up. Then I laid back down and the bed started turning again turned so that I knew I was going to throw up and I started running to get down the hall to the bathroom hoping I wouldn't disturb my mother and between my room and the bathroom head comes all the lands down and all what was down under the lands down the lands down had got up under it and brought it up and while I was in the bathroom throwing up, my mother got up. She smelled naturally. And she started cleaning up. That stuff was so strong, it took the varnish up off the floor. I'm telling you, I'm just a boy. My mother said, son, have you been drinking? I said, yes, ma'am. 
Because I used to get special whoopings when I lied, you see. So, I learned early, tell the truth and take that one whooping rather than tell a lie and let her discover it and get three or four, you know. So I said, yes, mother, I went to a party and, and we uh, got a little something and, and I, you know, I got sick. She said, well, I hope you learned your lesson. I said, I did. So even in all my nightclub days, you can go back as the white man is doing now, trying to find people that knew me. All my friends will tell you, that boy is clean. I never performed high. And I fired anyone in my band. That was how I wanted you to be at your best. And I can't have no drunken performer or no coked out performer with me. I had people offer me coke in those days. I turned all of that down, not because I'm afraid, but because I understood who I was and what I wanted from myself, and I did not want that, I did not need that, and I know you don't need it and you shouldn't want it yourself. I come all the way back to Betty Shabazz. <laughs> this demon wants to insinuate that Farrakhan had Malcolm killed. In this paper, they say they brought Farrakhan in for questioning. But they couldn't find anything on him. Brother and sister, I was so far removed from the assassination of Malcolm X. These people never questioned me, never. But the white man would like to try me in the press because they cannot try me in a court of law. When they said I, accused, I, I threatened the life of Milton Coleman, the FBI could not listen to the tape and find anything on the tape to bring me into court on a charge. So the FBI and the Justice Department dropped that, but the press keeps putting it out there because they want to try me in the court of public opinion. So the serpent, look at this now, cast out of his mouth water like a flood. Now, if you've ever been in a flood, and right there in Washington, while they were flooding the black people with propaganda, Allah was flooding from West Virginia into Virginia, right on into Washington. The black folk in Washington didn't even know there was a flood because the headline every day was Louis Farrakhan. But on Friday, they couldn't hold it back. They had to tell the people that Georgetown, where black folk used to live, that white folk pushed us out of, was now underwater. Where white folk now underwater. Where white folks live, there was a statue there called the Awakening. And the statue with the Awakening man with his arm up was covered up, up to the arm. With what? So Allah was so swift in taking retribution that while that wicked serpent, that Jew of the synagogue of Satan, was casting out of his pen or mind or mouth water like a flood after the woman that he might cause the woman to be carried away by the flood. 
Allah was flooding them. He was actually carrying them away. Look at this now, brothers and sisters. A flood, the power of it, will uproot trees. Floods undermine the foundation of your house. It undermines the railroad beds. Floods bring the serpents out of their hiding places. <laughs> you all right? Some of you are strong in your faith. Yes, sir. Like a tree. Yes, sir. But if you're not careful when the flood comes, oh, yes, sir. it will uproot your tree. And it will disturb the foundation of your faith. That's what it's designed for. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> but according to the book, yes, sir. the book says, and the earth helped the woman. That's right. yeah. And the earth opened up her mouth That's right. and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Yes. And the dragon was angry with the woman. Yes. Now, what I'm saying to you right now, you're going to see this take place. Washington, D.C. was a test. They're going out now among the people sampling what effect their propaganda has had on the strength of the faith of the people. And what they're going to find is that after all that they've said and done, I could go to Washington tomorrow and instead of drawing 11,000, we could fill RFK Stadium. <clears throat> the earth here is you. You're going to hear the propaganda, and you're going to swallow it up. Just as the earth takes the water into it and dries up as though the water never existed. <laughs> You will take the propaganda in, That's right. and it will not affect you, yes. and I will be helped That's right. by you still. Yes. And when they see that nothing that they have done is working, they get angry. It didn't work in Washington. They were quiet. We got 11,000 on a Monday night. In Los Angeles, they blasted me. And 19,000 came out on a Saturday night. In New York, they decided to kill me. This is the unwritten story of New York. They decided to kill me. And they had set the stage. And the, uh, the Jewish newspaper said that they met Koch and the Jewish leaders and planned their strategy. And if you open the second surah of the Quran, it reads, I think in the 72nd verse, and the Jews planned. <laughs> and Allah planned. And Allah is the best of planners. In the Bible it says, when Jesus had drawn the multitudes, the Jews had planned to kill him. And Jesus went out from among them. See, he escaped their plans. And though they had planned against me in New York, Allah brought me right out from among them. And now they're angry. And they're getting more angry every day that their strategy does not work. So the next step is attempt on his life. So the dragon was angry with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of 
Percy. The remnant means that the nation now is not as strong as it was when the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was among us. What you represent is a remnant of those that once were. But now she sees even the remnant is able to bring it back. So she goes to war with the remnant of the seed of the message. Uh -huh. Will you, will you weaken? No. 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 To those of you who fear, in my conclusion, I say to you, fear not. God is going to try you with a little fear, yes. But you must stand up, even if they make you afraid, stand up. I remember once I spoke at the John Jay College of Criminal Law and Justice in New York City. And I went to that college, which is a white college for criminal justice in New York. And they had a group of white uh, persons who were police, who were FBI agents, everything in the audience. And I had a very nice subject, lovely subject, not designed to offend anyone. <laughs> and I got through the subject all right. But in the question and answer period, one of those Caucasians got up. And he said, Mr. Farrakhan, and he opened his coat and did this. And there was this big gun on his hip. He said, Mr. Farrakhan, he said, is it true that Elijah Muhammad teaches that the white people are devils? Now, I'm going to tell you the truth. <laughs> because the truth is really that which sets you free. See my coat? Well, that's the way my that's the way my heart was pounded. And when you get disturbed like that, brothers, sisters, that's your test. My heart was pounded. I said, man, I didn't want to come in here like this. <laughs> but I can't deny the truth. So I stood up, looked him straight in his eye, and said, yes, sir. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches not that some white people are devils, but that all white people are devils. Now, I was afraid, but I challenged my fear. Yes. Then I said, and this is the reason why he said you all are deaf. <laughs> and then I went on into it. And the more I went into it, he didn't want to hear him. He said, I understand, now, I understand. <laughs> that man forgot about the gun that was on his hip. He became afraid when I stood up. And I am saying to you, this does not mean that you will not be made afraid. Yes, sir. But it does mean that when you are made afraid, don't cower and run from the truth. Challenge your fear. And even though you are afraid, stand up. Die like a man today. And call on the God and say, Allahu Akbar. Allah. And deal. And you will find that the more you stand up, God will take the fear off of you. And he will put it on your enemies. You're going to be tried with fear, so, but don't be afraid. And those who believe and are the doers of good to others, there is no fear for them.
nor shall they grieve. So you who say you are with me, you who say you will stand with me, listen to me carefully, you who say that you believe in Allah, let me warn you. You can't stand with me without prayer. Any of you that does not pray to God, Allah, is not with me now. Because many of you that are spiritual children would like to make me a God. Because many of you that are spiritual children would like to make me a God beside Allah. And if you do that, you corrupt your faith. I am telling you of my human self. Though in this human there is divine. Just like you. Do you hear me? But any one of you that wants to worship me and not Allah is a disbeliever. There is no God but Allah. And if you want to equate me with the God, you're wrong. I am no more than a servant of his as you are. I want you to know this. Don't ask me to pray for you as though your prayers are not valuable. Learn to pray for yourself. Then ask me to pray for you. And I ask you to pray for me. It is not that my prayers are more important than yours. Because you have direct access to God. You don't have any intermediaries who stand in between you and your God. You can go to your God directly yourself. There is no priesthood here. That you must wait to come through Brother Firecon to get to the God. No, no, no. You go to him. Direct for yourself. I'm warning you. Set up no rival or no partner with Allah. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad is not his equal. He's a servant of Allah that has been exalted by Allah. But he didn't make himself. He's a made man. And a made man is not equal to the maker, nor is a sent man equal to him who sent him. Is that clear? There is no God but Allah. Some of you can feel the devil mounting for an attack. Yes, sir. And you get a little nervous. And you say, we need training. Yes, you do. What kind of training do we need? Well, we need martial arts training. Yes, you do. But that's secondary. What? We, we need weapons training. You do. 
but not those weapons. Come on. You cheapen the God. But Farrakhan, you being a little spooky, then you go on and leave me alone. You gun told us, and you didn't want to go out and get you shotguns and Uzis and automatic weapons and whatnot. This is not what Farrakhan is advocating. But if they come, they're going to come shoot. They come any way they want to come. Now, Farrakhan, be realistic. How can I be more realistic than my teacher? I'm not the equal of Elijah Muhammad. I'm unworthy to lace up his shoes. And my father never asked us once to carry weapons. In fact, he told us all, get rid of this. Why? He said the fight is with Allah. He is the one that is to take up the fight with the enemy. Am I lying? Yeah, but one day he said, if they're shooting at you, shoot back. If you're following me to him, you don't anticipate the command. You wait for the command. Don't call me Lord and then act as though you the Lord giving yourself instruction. Since I didn't ask you to call me Lord, I asked you to call me brother. <laughs> but if you recognize that our father told you to obey me, then wait on me. I didn't tell one of you to gather up for the Jewish Defense League, the Ku Klux Klan, or anybody else. Did I? No. And I'm not going to tell you that unless he orders me in that way. So as I leave you, I'm asking you and appealing to you, don't put your trust in some little cheap pop gun that you bought from the white man that could misfire. <laughs> the white man ain't selling you big enough gun to be any trouble to him. He only makes sure you get enough to be troublesome to each other. And the proof of it is, I don't ever read too much about you shooting nobody. But who? But who? You get a pistol, sister, you got one in the home. You get angry with your husband. He smacks you around, you shoot him. You leave the house. You leave the pistol somewhere, your little child gets it, kills himself or his little sister or brother. Don't rely on these things. Don't rely on the carnal weapons of this world. Rely on Allah. So if you want to be with me, first thing you have to do is recognize the God. If you want to walk with me. Because I'm going sure enough into the valley. 
I'm not trying to frighten any of you. If you don't think you can walk with me any further, it's all right. I understand. But you ought to understand what it means when you back down on truth simply because you're afraid. The scripture says the fearful and the unbelieving will have their part in the lake that burns with fire. You don't be afraid to lose your life for Christ's sake. You be afraid to live a life other than what is pleasing to Almighty God. You follow me? You clear? Then my advice to you is to put on the whole armor of God. That's the first thing you do before you go into battle. Know your armament. Now, I know you want to be a ninja. <laughs> and you get in your noon trucks and your darts and all kind of paraphernalia that will enable you to deal. And you get caught out in the street one day unexpectedly when all your stuff is in the house. <laughs> And you better have somebody with you whenever you going in or going out. And that's our lot. That's who I put my trust in. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the helmet of salvation. A heavy, a heavy helmet. When you put on the helmet of salvation, to be saved is to know God, the scripture says, and his son Jesus. That's salvation. Helmet is what goes over your head. If you don't know the God and know the Christ, then you ain't got the right helmet on, somebody will hit your head, brother. Take your head off. When a man or a woman knows God and knows the Christ, you got your helmet on. You ready to deal from the head now, but you can't go out just with your helmet. You got to put on the whole armor, not just a helmet. But once your head is suited up with the knowledge of God, that's a heavy knowledge. And the knowledge of his Christ, and you are rooted in that knowledge. Boy, your helmet is on firm. Ain't nobody going to knock your helmet off, brother. But then the book said, put on the breastplate of righteousness. You didn't hear me? Now, when the white man want to shoot at you, and he wants to score, and he puts that thing in his hand, and he positions himself. And he aims right to here. Because he knows all the vital organs right in here. Once he busts you up here, your heart, your lungs, 10 to 1, you're not going to make it. So, here is where you need the best protection. So, the white boy puts on a bulletproof vest. Right. <coughs> see, but this Satan that we're fighting with, mm -hmm. see, he don't hit with this. Right. That's his last thing. Yes, uh -huh. thing that he hits with first mm -hmm. is suggestion. Right. Smart, clever words dropped into your ears or written by the pen that uproot your faith and plant in your heart disease. You understand? Interfere with the inspiration that comes, the lungs, the breath, the breath of life cuts you off from getting the breath, the word. This white man is a smart devil, brother. When you're dealing with the ignorant devil, 
you dealing with a devil that come at you this way. And maybe you can knock him down. But when you deal with the Jew, you're dealing with the smartest of them all. And he's dealing with him. And he's dealing with your heart. You understand? Yes, so if you ain't got this cup, I ain't talking about with a bulletproof vest. I'm talking about with the breastplate of righteousness. That's right. That's right. See, if you're not right, you're unprotected. So the Quran bears witness to what I'm saying. It says your protection is your righteousness. So you and I can't be saying one thing and doing another. You got to be what you say you are. Are you listening, brothers and sisters? You can't be saying I went fire con and shooting crap in the back alley, selling dope, snorting coke, running games on women. You can't do that and say you weren't working with me. See, then your breastplate is off. And you're subject to get wounded here. And when you get wounded there, it's death. See, and when you're wrong, and you know you're wrong, and you don't want to get right, you set up a disease in your heart. And when you got a disease in your heart, and those diseases start afflicting you, they start with envy. Envy, you want what your brother got. Or what your sister has. And then it escalates. It starts with disappointment and sometimes feeling that you're better than somebody else. Right. Or what your sister has. Right. And then it escalates. It starts with disappointment and sometimes feeling that you're better than somebody else. Right. But you don't get what you think you ought to get so the heart becomes diseased. Right. You get set up to be taken right on off. So you've got to put on the breast, breastplate of righteousness. Then your foot has to be shod in the shoe of the God. And that's some heavy stuff. You know, if you kick somebody barefoot, they don't say that it's a felony. But once you put on a shoe, and you kick somebody with a shod foot, yeah. then that's a weapon. That's right. You understand? Yeah. Now, if your foot is shod with the shoes of the gospel, and gospel here means the good news of the salvation of your God coming to you and your people. Yeah. You got that on your feet, so you walk in, in the path of the gospel. You got the knowledge of God in his Christ. You got on your breastplate of righteousness. Then you pick up the sword of the Spirit. You ready to see? Now, if you don't think that Firecon got his arm on. Hey, hey. Brother, sisters, look. I got to stop now. This the end. The boy got on his arm. Now you know, look, common sense should tell you. Have you ever in your life heard of a man that the white man is beating on every day for nearly two years? How many of you could take? Somebody talking about you like that, writing about you like that, creating enemies from your friends, where your own friends turn you down and repudiate you because they're afraid. How many of you could take it and smile and continue to go on and work for God and work for your people? You know, there ain't too many of you that could do that. You really, some of you want my position because you like the honor that goes with it. But you don't want to bear the cross. You understand? You want the crown. 
But the minute anybody with you criticizes you, you want to kill them. But I'm criticized all day long, and I never talk about killing those who criticize me. Can't you see that my helmet is on? Now, I must confess, I am not a holy man. I make my share of mistakes. But righteous, he has declared me. And he's declared you too. And it's not that I am that, but he stands with me, and in that I am. You know, when he came to Moses and told Moses, take off your shoes, the ground where you stand is holy. It wasn't that Moses was holy, but he was standing there with him. I'm not holy, but the Holy One is standing with me. I'm not using it as an excuse, but I'm striving to be righteous. Keep my breastplate strong. You do the same. Yes, I got my foot sharp in the gun. And Jack, my sword is flashing. <laughs> when that thing come back, every time you look at it, swing a head is going off. <laughs> Boy is dancing on him. You come in with one kind of head and go out with another one. The boy took your head off so smooth and put a new head on your shoulder just that quick. You went out, lost one head, got another one, and went on out the door and said, Man, that's really something. Look, that's the sword. That's the sword of the Spirit of Almighty God. The book says, Not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. It is not my power that is raising the people up. It is the Spirit of Almighty God. I want you to follow that example. I don't want you to rely on no weapon but the weapon of truth. I want you to train physically. Be good, well trained in the martial art, but be better trained in service to Almighty God. As much as you know your cottage, I want you to know your rock heart. You hear what I'm saying? So don't show me the mastery in this. Show me the mastery in this and this and this and frustration to the will of Allah. Then I'm assured that when you do this, then I know this power. Yes. Not just when you say, hey, no, no. When you say, hello, hello, yes. I know I can crush your chest. against the wiles of Satan. Thank you for listening. And may Allah bless you. As I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum.